Hello, welcome to Delicious Simplicity. I'm Anna Torkakis. On the menu today, we have it's time for a tea party. And to help me do that, I have my friend Sarah here to help me. Hi, Anna. Hi, Sarah. Nice to see nice you. Nice to see you. It's always a pleasure. I'm so happy that you could come and join us on the show here today. Thank you for inviting me. You're welcome. So Sarah's going to um, tell us a little bit about a traditional tea party, and we'll do that in a little bit. In the meantime, we are going to do some baking. Great. And um, the baking that we'll do, uh, we'll bake a carrot cake banana bread, which I think will go really nice. Yeah. With, I know some specialty that you're going to do for us. And also to go with our tea, we're going to have a lemon chiffon cake. So let's get started. So okay. The first thing I'm going to do um, is the lemon chiffon cake. Um, and the reason is because um, this, like, you need to bake it as soon as you um, as you mix it. You don't, you can't have it sit around. So in here, I have two and a quarter cups of cake flour. So it's really important that we use cake flour with this cake, with the chiffon cake, because you want it to be nice and and, and high. And that's the, it makes a very impressive uh, presentation. Um, and then, um, so I have two cups in here of flour. Um, cake flour, and to that I'm going to um, sift together with that a cup of sugar, just plain old sugar, two teaspoons of baking powder, okay. and then I'm also going to use just a pinch of salt. Well, that's a pinch. You always want to use uh, a little bit of salt in baking, even in, in your desserts, you know, as you know, probably, because it, it kind of helps with the, with the uh, chemical reaction that takes place when you cook. So I have one of these gizmos and it works really well. I use it for everything. They need a big bowl so you don't make a mess. And get all those lumps out. Yeah, right, exactly. Wait, and you know what else is funny is um, at the end, I typically end up with some sugar left over that just won't go through. Yeah. And all those things, gee, should I throw that back in, in here anyway? <laughs> so, but then I think, well, if it didn't go through, maybe that's the reason for not putting for, it back for, in. Yeah, yeah. For, for the reason for sifting it. Because you want, you, you, I'm assuming you want this to be um, light and airy, which yeah, is why you sift yeah, the flour. Yeah, yeah. This is a very simple cake to make. Um, it is a little finicky, though, and, and fussy. Things have to be just right. See what I mean? There's always like, stuff left. And lately I just I figured if it doesn't go through there's got to be a reason. So this is my flour. So I'm going to put that aside. And then um, you separate the eggs. So we have uh, five egg yolks here. And we use five egg yolks and seven egg whites. So you need a little bit more volume. So to the egg I'm going to add, I'm gonna add uh, some water first. And, you, and it's really important that you use a wooden spoon. Don't ask me why. This is a recipe that my sister gave me. And she told me to use a wooden spoon. I do what my big sister tells me. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I do. And although I don't follow the instructions completely to the letter, because you have, you're supposed to mix it for five minutes. Um, yeah, sometimes over mixing is not a good thing. So I'm going to add. Um, it's about two-thirds and a cup of water. So if you wanted to flavor this like in a real lemony flavor, you could add some lemon juice to it. If you wanted to make an orange flavored um, chiffon cake, you would just add uh, maybe half a cup of orange juice and some water. So here's the water. I'm going to add half a cup of vegetable oil. That goes in. One teaspoon of uh, lemon zest. So that's the peel of one lemon that you uh, grated. And then I'm adding one teaspoon of vanilla. Just your basic ingredients. I think fancy. So you can probably make this with whatever ingredients you have at home. And then I'm going to mix my, combine my wet ingredients with my dry ingredients. So this is where you want to use your wooden spoon. And I like to do it slowly because sometimes yeah. if you add too much um, 
too much of the, if you combine the liquid and the dry too much, the flour somehow doesn't absorb the liquid well. And I'm wondering if using a, a wooden spoon as opposed to when you have eggs, you tend to want to whisk them and it might be just putting too much air into the mixture. Yeah, and uh, also you're right, and I think uh, as well you, you may prevent from developing the gluten. Yeah. So you want the cake to be not crumbly, but you want it to, to have texture in it. So, you want to do this for five minutes? Sure. <laughs> well, let me just clean up the place here for you, because I'm going to be making a lot of noise. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to be whipping up the egg whites. And so before I get going, so to the egg whites, um, I'm going to add a quarter of a teaspoon of cream of tartar. And what I do, I don't know if you do this, but what I do, I try to, I break the egg whites a little bit first. And then I add my cream of tartar. So I only need about a quarter, oops, a quarter of a teaspoon. You know, the funny thing is that when the eggs are all whipped, it feels like, it looks like a cloud and you just kind of want to eat it. Mm. But, <laughs> like uh, meringue. Yeah. So how do you know when the egg whites are ready? Uh, we, yeah, um, when they form stiff peaks. Okay. And the peaks. But what I, the other thing, let me turn this off for a minute so I can, you can hear me talk. I don't know if you can see this now, but the, um, the cream of tartar doesn't dissolve immediately. So what I like to do is beat it low until I, s I don't see any more a cream of tartar granules in there. Yeah, they're all pretty much the size, oh, yeah. as you can see yeah. earlier. So now I'm going to go all the way up. So you wanted to know how how do I know when it's done? Mm -hmm. So as you can see here, see how like it. it sort of stays where it lands, yep. sort of this little mounds. So this is not quite ready yet, but when, when you see that happening, when it just, things just don't move around this much, you, you know, you, it's when you know it, it's happening. So then you see those stiff, yep. stiff peaks. So it kind of lets you know. Um, so that's done. There we go. Now with this, so then we are going to pour the, um, the yolk mixture into the egg whites. Okay. And we do that in three sort of three tries. First one, you want it to be a little bit smaller because you just kind of want to lighten it up first. And you want to do what they call folding? I'm folding it yeah. in, exactly. So I, I say this is an easy cake to make. As you can see, it comes together really quick with simple, simple basic ingredients. Um, the cooking temperature um, in the oven make a big difference. So if your oven is off, you know, so that, you know sometimes the ovens don't really register, the temperature's not really what it says on the, uh, on the clock outside the oven, um, then you could have a problem. I mean, you have to have a lot of patience here. You've got to do it slowly. Because actually, you know, it, 
you wonder if, oh, is it going to deflate if by mixing it too much? But you got to get it in there. You got to right, mix it. Right, yeah. So. But if you fold it like so, um, it, it will work out fine. And the other thing I like about this cake, this is a simple thing, but you don't have to um, grease the pan. So you just put it in a dry pan. I love that because I don't have to worry about greasing it and uh, dusting it with the flour and then shaking it out. One more, more mess to clean up. Right, one more. One right, more yeah, one less thing to worry about. I know, and it's amazing, and it doesn't stick. So the so we put this cake in a um, tube pan. My mother used to have this, she used to make this cake too, and she used to have these tube pans. And, you know, I don't know. So I, I never had one, and I thought they were like a thing of the past. Then I went to the store, and they had tons of them, different sizes too. So this is a 10-inch to pan and this is a nice one because th this comes out so it makes it great so when, when it once it cooks and you and you um and you cool it i usually just go in with the knife at the bottom mm -hmm. um and just um you know go through it to to um to get it off and then it, and then yeah i do the same thing on the inside and then it comes right off then we gently pour it in Have you ever made a souffle, Sarah? Mm, no, I'm not. I'm not a big baker, um, just because my pavlova is never used to oh, rise yeah. and things like that. So I, I, I gave it up, and I could never make shoe pastry. That's one thing. It used to come out like shoe donuts. Oh so really? I think I've given up on the whole baking thing. I watch a lot of baking shows, though. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> you get your fix that yeah. way. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to, I don't want to leave anything behind. Yeah, I haven't either made a souffle, you know. I think once a year I make a carrot cake for my husband's birthday. Oh, that's Because that's good. his favorite. Oh, and okay. That's really the extent of my baking. No, I do a little bit. Okay, so that's that. Doesn't that look beautiful? Just oops, get a shot of this. Doesn't that look pretty? Just like that. And then it'll just come almost to the top. And it'll look nice and golden yellow. So we'll put it in the oven for three, at 350 for 60 minutes or thereabouts. So I say thereabouts because as I was mentioning, all ovens are different. With the magic of TV, we have the cake ready, and it looks like that. Beautiful. That? Beautiful. That? What do you think? Isn't that gorgeous? Yeah, that's great. It just really makes a very nice presentation. So we are going to serve this with a blueberry sauce. So in here, I'm going to put this aside for the, mo for the time being. Excuse me. So we can just reach for the blueberries for me. So in here I have half a cup of water, just plain water that I'm bringing to a boil. And I'm adding, this is uh, one cup of uh, blueberry, uh, blueberries. Obviously you know it's blueberries, but it's one cup. Yeah. And then I'm gonna need three tablespoons of sugar in here. Oh, here we go. You come over here. And when you're at home, do you use measuring or do you just sort of judge eyeball uh, I usually it depends salt like I will eyeball all the time sugar I tend to measure sometimes depending on things I may just use a regular tablespoon yeah. and then if you could get me that lemon lemon yeah you can get me that lemon too. Just lemon yeah and I'm just gonna need about a quarter of a tea a quarter of a teaspoon of lemon juice in here and a knife that cuts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. This will do. There we go. All right. So, like a quarter teaspoon, I would eyeball. And especially if there's no flour or baking powder um, involved, you know, something like this, it doesn't really matter that much. This is probably a little more, but that's okay. So, stir this 
I'll bring this to a boil. So we also need a tablespoon of water. So in here I have a tablespoon of water. So these are boiling. So once they pop up and you notice that they're cooked, yep. you add the, um, the thickener, which is the cornstarch. So I need a little bit, I need a teaspoon. The generous quarter of a teaspoon is the will do. So the bake the um, the cornstarch, as you know, will will thicken it, and then depending on how much you add, it'll either be thicker or not thinner. And that also you can control it. If you want it thicker, you let it cook longer. If you want it thinner, you don't let it cook as long. And then also you have to take into account that it thickens as it cools. This kind of reminds me of when you know when you make um, cranberry sauce from from scratch and the and the um, cranberry stuff popping. Yeah. I like the popcorn. <laughs> these do not, these don't pop quite as much, but they do get really nice and translucent. Look how beautiful they look. They puff up, and then they explode. Yeah. <laughs> I actually um, cook blueberries that are beginning to be not so fresh. Oh, okay. And I'll yeah. cook them up and have that for breakfast. Yeah, yeah, I do, I do that sometimes. Yeah. Strawberries, yeah. peaches. Any soft fruit yeah, like yeah. that. All the food that, you know, that's hanging around. <laughs> yeah. You're either the mother or the father that eats that stuff. You know, in my, in my household, used to be, when I was at home, my, my father used to eat all the leftovers. In my household, it happens to be me, because my son <laughs> won't eat it, my husband won't eat it. So, all right, so that's boiling. And so we're going to add, we could let it go a little bit longer. But if, so again, it, it all depends on what, what you're trying to get. If you want to have really nice blueberries actually in it, then you, you might want to add it now. If you want it, the blueberries to cook down some more, you might want to wait. But I'm too impatient, so I'm going to add I now. See, then you bring it back to a boil and you let it cook up to five minutes. So I would say like within that time frame, it all depends. It's all personal if you want it thicker or thinner. All right, so since this is TV and we have magic that happens, I'm going to stop this here because we have some already made. So we want to reach over. Thank you. So I have some that I've already made to my liking. It's not too thick, not too thin, and it'll just go really nice over the, over the cake. So. Should we get the, the tallest oh, peak? Oh yeah, let's go for it. The tallest <laughs> peak, right? <laughs> This really is a showstopper. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? Oh, that looks great. Isn't that great? Isn't it amazing how all the colors, like, you know, it's evenly, evenly colored. So we'll put that down. Actually, maybe we'll cut some pieces. There's one. Yeah, because there's another little peak left. <laughs> there's a little more of the peak. Well, here's the other thing about when we, when we talk about cooking and, and, or baking, whichever, you know, there's so much, uh, you can have so much fun with it. Even, you know, with the cake here, we can, you can cut it in so many different, different ways. We can cut it in slices, and we can cut this again. You can cut it in cubes. You, you can just do so much with it, just in terms of the, the presentation. Yeah. So then we'll add some beautiful sauce on it. Look at that, isn't that nice how it just falls? Mm -hmm. And 
and you're eating your fruit as well. That's right. There we go. Isn't this gorgeous? Yeah. So we'll put it over to have later with our tea. Okay. Sounds good. So we'll move this here. All right. Next on our list of this, the, the um, on this list for our tea party is the carrot cake banana bread. And if you think that was a simple cake to make, <laughs> this one is so simple and it's almost foolproof. Uh, you can't mess it up. All right, so for our carrot cake banana bread, we are going to start with some bananas. So here we start with two very ripe bananas. They have, well, you want to make sure that they're ripe. So if you're planning on making this cake, you might want to go to the supermarket a couple of days earlier and get it because that's what happened to me. So I was all set. I was going to make this cake. And um, I go to the supermarket, and they usually have, you know, the, the, um, the stand where they have, like, those extra ripe bananas. Yeah. They're, like, 29 cents a pound or something. And I thought, well, fine. I'll go there and get those today. Well, I get there with this nut. Of course. Yeah, so I had to, and the ones that they had weren't all that ripe either. <laughs> so I had to wait a couple of days. So now, so you, it calls for two mashed potatoes, ba mashed, ba sorry, bananas. And I, I like to do it as few uh, utensils as possible. So if a fork does the job, that's what I use. How about you? I use a potato <laughs> mash. <laughs> So the bananas are ready. So in here, in the liquid portion here, we have the um, brown, we have some brown sugar. We have some agave sugar in here as well. Then we have some vanilla that we poured in here. Right? Have we gotten all yep. the ingredients? Mm -hmm. And eggs and oil too. Yeah, the egg is in here with these two eggs in here, a half a cup of oil. And I'm going to add this in with the bananas. Get me a spoon in there. Is it a spoon? So these are the wet ingredients. I thought this was an easy cake. That, that's probably the other thing that I do bake is banana breads when I've got ripe bananas yeah, hanging you, around. You don't need a mixer. No. Nope. Well, that thing to wash. All right. So, and here I have the dry ingredients. And the dr dry ingredients, I have two cups of all-purpose flour in here, baking powder, um, one teaspoon, a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon, and a quarter teaspoon of... Um, grated nutmeg. So nutmeg is something that um, is not used that much in baking. Uh, sometimes it's used a lot if you're using cream uh, that calls for nutmeg. So they come into like little little things like this. And many times when you're using them, they fall on the floor. They have to start again. Um, so I'll put a teaspoon of that. That's all here in the dry ingredients. So I'm going to mix I like to mix the dry ingredients to make sure that all the um, spices are mixed in. Okay, so then I'm going to mix this in here. a mixer too if you want. Yeah. But I don't mind doing it. I like doing this by hand. Sometimes it's easier just to do it by hand instead of getting a mixer out. Yeah, right, yeah. <coughs> yeah, 
Yeah, and the other thing too, I found the original recipe to this um, to this carrot cake banana bread called for one egg, and I just really felt that it's needed a, 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 that second egg. So now I add two eggs. And the other is um, just what this is considered a quick bread, and with any quick bread, you don't want again develop that gluten like right. you would in bread. So if you do it by hand, if you mix it by hand, you. you the tendency to do that is diminished. Now I'm going to add the um, carrots, a cup of shredded carrots. I love to do the, this is one thing I like to do is shred carrots. <laughs> now this also, um, Recipes like this uh, t lend themselves well to other additions too. So you could add nuts to this, walnuts, pecans, um, raisins, all or one. You don't have to, all might be too much, but one of, of those uh, those things would just add something. If, that, you know, if, that's what, if that's what you like. Yeah. So then this goes into a loaf pan. What I like to do is I tell you, this parchment paper is like a godsend. I use it everywhere at any time I can to line pans. It just yep. makes cleanup easy and nothing sticks. So, now the other thing I like about this recipe um, is that you can actually, I can pour this in your, um, in, your, in your loaf pan, cover it and put it in the freezer. And when you're ready to bake it, just take it out and put it in, just allow an extra 10 minutes or so and you wouldn't know the difference. So, so that's you, really good. you freeze it before you bake it? Right. And sometimes um, what I do is I'll make it, like I'll mix it. If I have a few minutes, I'll mix it and put it in the refrigerator and then come back later and bake it. That look pretty? If you wanted to, you could sprinkle some nuts on top, but we won't. So, this is all set to go in the oven at, again, at 350 for about 60 minutes. And so I'm going to put this in. I'm also going to check on my um, chiffon cake that we actually put in through here. You don't want to open the door, but I can see through, so it needs a few more minutes. Um, now, to this, to that um, carrot cake banana bread, we want to dress it up a little bit, so we're going to make a little um, topping for it. We do have one already made here. Doesn't that look pretty? Looks can't, good. Can't <laughs> <wait anymore. laughs> yeah, doesn't that look good? Then to this, um, so here I have some cream cheese that I've already whipped. And to that, we're going to add some ginger. Ooh, nice. Yeah. This is a great recipe. My friend Nancy gave me this recipe. And she has good taste. <laughs> so this, so I've whipped together about three ounces of um, cream cheese, and I'm going to add about a couple of tablespoons of minced ginger. This is crystallized ginger. Do you like that? I, I love crystallized ginger. I love it, ginger. yeah. This is great, because um, so with uh, calories as Farm Standing Garden Center provides a lot of the um, items of the produce here, the, the produce that we use, and they also had the crystal, crystallized ginger. Mm. Yeah, so you can pick up tons of stuff there. So I want to hear about the tea now. So what's, what, what do you think that most of us don't know about tea? I know you and I talked about this one time, and I'm like, what, a tea bag in the cup, that's it. Well, <laughs> but it's, there's more to it. The, there is, well, there is. I mean, the, the tea bag in the cup is always convenient, and it's um, something that even I do at home, or when I was in the office, I would just put a tea bag in and get hot water. I think that um, to have, um, really good tea, you really want to boil the water 
and have boiling water and you, you start with that. And then also you want to um, probably put it in a teapot and actually steep the tea in a teapot as opposed to in the cup with the tea bag and string hanging out. It just doesn't look so good. Is it just for looks or is it, does it make a difference? Uh, I think so. I think it, it really does give it um, a better flavor because you're going to steep the tea and then you're going to pour it into your cup and the tea bag's not going to keep sitting in that cup. And if, you, if you're a slow tea drinker like I am, the tea's going to get stronger and stronger. And what happens with me is if it gets too strong, then it starts to upset my stomach. Oh, so, okay. yeah. so now you can control how strong you want your tea. And what's the best way to um, have tea? Is it with um, milk and sugar, or is it uh, I think plain? It, I think it's a personal preference. Uh, I was I was brought up that we always had at least milk in our tea, and I remember that uh, my mother tells me the story that when I was a child, they gave me a sip of my dad's tea, and I liked that because it had the sugar in it, whereas oh, okay. my mother's tea didn't. Uh, but they always had milk. We, th there was milk in uh, everybody's tea that I can remember. My whole family, my grandparents. So um, I think that's... That's a, that's a very English that's way of doing it. It is, milk yes. And milk and sugar. Yeah. My husband's Greek, so he drinks his plain. I'm Italian, but I use milk and sugar. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I think it's personal preference. Yeah. The milk sometimes cuts the acidity of the tea. And you know what else I do? I don't know how proper this is to do, but you know that crystallized ginger? I'll drop a piece in it. And it just makes so, such a difference. I mean, like a, you can really tell. It, it, remo it removes that tannin flavor yeah, from, the, yeah. from the tea. Yeah. Now, somebody was telling me once, or maybe I read it somewhere, I'm not sure which, that you don't want to use boiling water. You don't want your water boiling. A we, Is there any truth, anything to I, that? I don't know, because I have always been taught to boil the water, and I actually think it tastes better. But I think maybe with green teas, you may not want to do that. Oh, maybe. So it may be the, the type of tea that you use. Yeah, maybe, yeah. So this, in here, I've put two tablespoons of uh, minced ginger and, and the cream cheese. And, you know, I'm just going to add a touch of sugar, only because, and this sounds really weird, but only because I think there's, because there's sugar in the ginger, so you don't want to take away too much of that sugar. You, wanna, you want the, um, the same, some of the, in, some of the same ingredients in, uh, throughout, so you don't want the sugar to, to kind of, um, you don't want the, the crystallized ginger to lose that sweetness. Right. So I'm not adding a lot, just a little. Okay, well, maybe a heaping teaspoon. No, that's too much. There we go. Isn't this fun? I was talking to my sister one day. I'm like, we should do, like, cook together. She's like, you know, we cook together at all the holidays. Isn't that enough? <laughs> I'm like, no, not like that. I just like making one thing. Make that one would be thing. fun, yeah. See what Nancy thinks about adding the extra teaspoon. And I think she'd like it. All right, so we'll, I'm just going to do the topping. Okay. Oh, so tell me more about tea. So what, what is tea time? Oh, uh, what is tea time? Um, I, well, and everyone in England tends to drink tea all the time. You know, it's tea in the morning, tea at lunch. My family, uh, when we, I remember one time visiting my aunt and um, after we had lived over here for a few years and everything was a tea break. Oh, so uh, it, it's, you break? know, it's, it's the national drink. And, um, but in the afternoon, and I think I still do this, is about between three and four, I have a break and I have a cup of tea and that's just something that I was brought up on you know and I remember going over to my grandparents and it would be about three or three or four in the afternoon and they would put the kettle on to have tea and we would have tea and cakes so, so is that 
it, so it's kind of like a ritual, but is, and is that still done? It's like, if you, do people in my, oh, somebody over the house for tea, come over for tea as opposed to like come over for dinner. Or, I mean, it's similarly, as if you would say, come over for, for I'm, dinner I'm or sure. lunch or I'm breakfast. Sh yeah, I, I think, I'm sure that there are people that do that. I don't, I, I'm sure now with people working in offices. Course, yeah, yeah. Although I remember I was watching a, a show the other day and they were talking about, um, it was a British show and it was talking about how people hate to be the ones that have to make the tea for the office and it reminded me when I used to work over there. Oh really? If you, if you had tea in the afternoon, you made tea for everybody in the office. And, oh. and you'd see someone would cool. come up and they'd fill up the kettle and they'd get all the mugs out and they'd, they would start putting all the, the milk in all the mugs for people's tea and they'd make a big pot of tea and everyone would have tea at their desks. Oh, wow. And they used to have, in, I guess in the 60s, they used to have tea ladies that came round with a big urn of tea for afternoon tea. Oh, wow. And if you were the one that felt like having a cup of tea and you decided to make it, you'd have to make it You have to everyone. make it for everyone. I bet you a lot of people didn't, want, didn't feel like having tea. No, we all took turns. Oh, it, it was, And sometimes, you know, you'd Lifting have... Lifting it like your job. Yeah, that was yeah. the perfect, the perfect up for you. Yeah. And we would take, you know, we would take turns or have buddies come and help. So. Yeah. Oh, good. So we'll cut a piece of this just because I want to show you how nice it looks inside with the chunks of um, carrot cake of carrots, sorry, not carrots, okay. So yeah, so this is definitely very different than the... Um, oh, nice. Yeah, so see it with the little pieces of carrots. So this is a denser cake, so kind of like, well, it, it fits in with our with our theme of a tea party, because yeah. you're going to tell us the, the um, so we'll put this over here. You're going to tell us what the typical menu is for a tea party, right? Uh, so what's, what are some of the, so if you're on a traditional tea party, what will So I, I think a traditional tea party, you would have finger sandwiches. And um, I remember we used to have egg and watercress sandwiches oh. or cucumber sandwiches. And to this day, I still love cucumber sandwiches. Well, you're the luck. You know what? <laughs> we have some men. Oh, that's great. Oh, can you wrap this? Here's your cucumbers, and here is the other sandwiches that I've made. So I've made smoked salmon Smoke. and oh, cucumber good. and radish uh, sandwiches. So now that's just not enough, right? What else do we do, you do with them? They have, they have to look fancy, right? Yeah. So they're they're oh, finger they're sandwiches. So they're cut. So here we have. I've made the sandwich. Your favorite sandwiches, right? So we have some cucumbers and the cucumber and radish salad, uh, radish filling and the smoked salmon. But you could do, like we were saying, a variety of different different things. Yeah, I think it's it's uh, personal preference, but no uh -huh. no peanut butter and jelly. Oh, no? <laughs> no, people don't eat peanut butter and jelly for afternoon tea. You know, that's so funny because you know why I thought of that and I think, I don't know, I'm not sure that that would quite go with it. So I guess, right. Um, all right, so uh, here I have some already made. So do you want to, um, let me, well, let me tell you, why don't you show us how you would make it? I got you some bread okay. here. And so here we have some whipped um, cream cheese. And I know butter is a big favorite, so we have that there too. So here's some bread. Now, what do you think? I've put this bread, I've taken the crust off. Um, you may or may not do that, you'll <laughs> tell us, right? Yeah. And um, so I have, these are like nice and stiff, so it makes spreading the, the um, cream cheese on it much easier and, much, and easier to cut. So, you know, sometimes you have bread and you cut it and it like all kind of bunches up, um, presses together. This will retain its form better. That's so. good. So um, for the cucumber sandwich, it's really, really simple. I'm just going to take some butter and little bit and then you're just going to um, put it on the bread. You just want to kind of spread it evenly and it just gives it 
just gives it a little bit of flavor. Mm -hmm. And then you would just take the cucumber and you just want to... Could you flavor that with a little bit of lemon juice or oil if you wanted to? Yeah, I think you could. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I like um, cucumber with lemon. Maybe a little salt. A little salt. Yeah. Um, depends if the butter's salted or not. Oh, right. Um, whether you want to put salt and then put some radishes on. Well, I typically buy unsalted butter only because the quality is better. When, when they add salt, it could be masking. may not be the top quality. So I always yeah. look for unsalted butter. And then I would butter the second half of the bread. Okay. And you, you can do that here okay. too. <laughs> I like butter. It's... Uh, yeah, that real nice creamy... Yeah, it, I, f I find that I use it in cooking. Um, I just like the flavor. It just gives a little bit of flavor. And then you... Let me just get you a cutting board from here. Okay. So that will make it easier. There we go. And then I would... Um, so you want these to be finger sandwiches. Yes. Yeah, so people can eat in one or two bites. So I would actually maybe cut that into uh, thirds or you could do corners. Okay. Um, let's do corners just because I think that's going to be a little bit easier. And then you're going to put them yeah, in on, here, so. on the plate. Yeah. We could do some like that and then some in, in quarters, triangles. Yeah, you can do that oh. too. So you, then you're going to do the, uh, you're going to do the, the, um, the cream cheese. Cream cheese. Yep. Well, I'll cut these. I already have some cream cheese here. So I'm going to do these in triangles. So with the cream cheese, I probably would not put cream cheese on both halves, but would you? Do you? Uh, I, no, I would probably just do, I would just do one side. Yeah, and then I'm just gonna. It looks pretty, and I like to put a little um, dill in it. Oh just yeah, it's such a nice, See, that's a good idea. It's a just nice flavor. Some of the dill. I like dill on my fish, so. Oh yeah, yeah. One of these. Oh, this is crunchy. Knife went right through in the cucumber. That must be really nice and refreshing. So you want these sandwiches to be light. You don't want them to have like heavy flavor because just, I mean you have having tea. So yeah, especially so like if you're having tea out in the garden oh, in the afternoon. Yes. I mean, cucumber is very very refreshing. Right, right, right. Uh, so I think that that would be um, you know nice and refreshing and, and a good summery thing. When I think of afternoon tea, I actually think of the summer. And I don't know if it's just because I used to, when I worked in London, uh, sometimes uh, when I'd be coming home from work, people would be leaving Buckingham Palace for the Queen's um, tea garden. Uh -huh. And she'd have, she'd have teas, afternoon teas. And you'd see everybody with their big fancy hats and their white gloves and their, oh, wow. their clothes. And so I always think, of, I think of uh, afternoon tea as a summer thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that a summer thing or is it No, year I think it's year round. Yeah. And I think also what you would eat in the, um, maybe in the winter might be different um, because along with uh, an afternoon tea, we would serve um, scones. Um, normally we'd serve some, we'd serve scones and and certain regions of England have different types of cream. So in uh, Devon, they would they serve clotted cream. So you would have oh. scones with fresh homemade strawberry jam and this clotted cream on what top. What exactly is clotted cream? Clotted cream. It doesn't sound like appetizing, but I know it, it is. It's actually, it's very delicious. Um, it's, um, you have to make it um, with um, unpasteurized, unhomogenized milk, and they basically just cook it for a long time. I, I think it's, you know, hours, it may even be days. And I, somewhere I have a recipe for clotted cream. It's oh, not, not something I would you do. Can, can you just buy it? You, you can, can just it. buy it, yes. Oh, I'm leaving a big boy here. There we go. These are so pretty. Ooh. 
Lab Alda. There we go. How's that? It, let's see. So what else? I think we have everything for yeah. our tea party, right? I think so. You want to take that over here, just so that we have. Look at this. Oh, you're going to tell us about the tea. Okay, so tell us about the tea. So here we have, uh, Sarah, you're going to show us here, we have the hot boiling yep. water, right? And actually we have two pots on. That's the tea kettle that's whistling. But we also need, you, you tell us, you need some extra hot water. So one of the things you want to do is you want to warm your teapot up before the water boils. So we're just going to take some water here. And we're just going to pour it into the teapot because this is going to keep your tea hot when you make it because we're going to steep it. And then you just tip it out. You can turn that off. For sure. And I decided today to use um, an Earl Grey tea, which has got a little bit more flavor than the regular um, black tea. And we just use a regular tea bag. With yeah, this is just a regular tea bag. And this is Earl Grey tea. So it has, um, actually, this, this one says breakfast strong. So I must have a couple of types of tea in my thing. Oh, I see. <laughs> so Earl Grey tea. And what you really want to do is you've got your pot warm and you want to put the tea bag in the pot and you want to use one tea bag per person and typically if you were using loose tea you would probably also put in one teaspoon or one one part of tea per person and then one for the pot I'm not going to do that today because I don't like my tea too strong but if you want a stronger cup of tea you put an extra tea bag in after you've done one per person. So is it, is it, is it, does it make a difference if you're doing two cups, one cup, two cups, or in other words, does more water, more volume make for a better cup of tea than if you're just making one cup of tea? Um, I think I have, a, I have a two cup teapot at home that I use just to make one cup, and sometimes I can make the tea a little bit too weak because I've, not, I've put too much water in for that one tea bag. And I think it comes down to personal preference yeah, of really yeah. how you like your tea. And I think you get that muscle memory, you know, how much water to put in. So we're going to do that now. We're going to put the, the boiling water into the teapot. And this, this is a large teapot, so this would be for a real, for a big tea, big, party. Big tea yeah, party. Yeah. Um, you can have um, quite a lot of tea. Oh, so how many people would typically be at a tea party? Like with just intimate close friends, so like like how big are, how big a group would you have? I don't know. The, the queen does her garden party. She <laughs> invites a hundred people. I think it just really depends. You know, you can have a small tea party, or you could have you know, so quite many, a few people. How many, how many friends? How many teacups you have at home? <laughs> yeah. <right? laughs> yeah. And then, okay. um, so you want to let that sit for a couple of minutes, um, just to let the tea um, infuse in the water, and then. Um, what I do, and this is, this is a big controversy, um, I was always taught you put the milk in first. And there will be people in different regions of, of England who would say, no, you put the, the milk in afterwards. So what you want to do is you just want to put a little bit of milk. And these are, these are actually teacups. They're eight ounces, so they're a real cup. Just put a splash of milk in. So we're all trying to, to consume less fat today. So if, would, is there anything in terms of full milk, whole milk, pot skim, skim milk, cream? Or no. Whatever. I wouldn't use cream, but um, you can use um, non-fat milk or you could use whole milk if you wanted to. It, it's going to taste a little bit different oh, right, because whole sure, milk is going to be a little bit yeah. creamier. Yeah. And then I'm actually going to bring um, the teapot over. So when you're ready to serve the tea, you just want to give it a, a stir because that then makes sure that all the water incorporates and it makes the tea a little bit stronger. Okay, okay. And then 
They always want to hold, put, put your I always on do. Yeah, it, yeah, it, it is. You want, don't want to see it rolling down the, the counter or the And then know, you just well, pour good. it in there. In fact, we should have left that probably a little bit longer and it would have been a little bit darker. Okay. That looks good though. And you, can, and you can, and we were talking earlier about adding crystallized ginger to yep, it. Yeah, you could do that. What other, what other spices could you add? Um, you could put lemon and, and just not have the milk. I actually don't drink milk in my tea, so I sometimes will do lemon. You could probably do orange, something like that. Okay, uh, good. And, and I drink a lot of herbal tea, so, you know, whatever you want to do. Herbis, right? Okay, yeah. all right, great. That's, that's, that looks really nice. You're going to pour another cup there? I can do. I'm going to pour a cup without the milk. And as you can see, this is a little bit darker now because, yeah, because it's been sitting. It, yeah. 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 Great. And there you have Earl Grey tea. Wonderful. Well, Sarah, thank you so much for coming by today. This was great. Maybe you can move a little closer. And so, and thank you for stopping by at our tea party. Um, maybe you can another time come in and, and join us as well. So for our tea party, this has been a traditional tea party. We've had finger sandwiches uh, that we've made of uh, smoked salmon and also with um, cucumbers and radishes. Uh, we've made a um, traditional, somewhat traditional carrot cake with banana bread to go as part of the menu for the traditional tea. And then we finished it, we're finishing it up but to go with a delicious cup of tea. We're finishing it up with a beautiful and delicious lemon chiffon cake with a um, blueberry sauce on top. So we are going to have some and I wish you were here with us. We want to. Thank, um, thank you to Calories Farm Stand and Garden Center for the, for the product that they provide and want to thank you for joining us. Thank you. Bye-bye.